the Australian government has revoked writer and former footballer David Icke's visa to conduct a multi-city speaking tour in Australia just four hours before his planned flight. This, despite coming to Australia ten times previously, never causing any trouble, nor even having a criminal record. In a video posted to YouTube, he explains that the Australian Coalition Government acted under pressure from an ALP candidate in league with a tiny organisation ironically called the Anti-Defamation Commission. He highlights the fact that Australia is now a one-party state, with both major parties pushing the same agenda, and that there is no real choice, regardless of who is in charge. Before we continue, for some amazing karma, please check out Subscribestar, where for as little as $5 a month you can support my work and help save Western civilization. Labor candidate Josh Burns, a man of Jewish ancestry, made the claim that Ike wanted to teach Holocaust denial in schools, a defamatory claim that Ike vehemently denies. As he isn't an Australian citizen, it will be hard to file a defamation case. However, we can still point out that like almost all modern politicians, Mr. Burns is a liar and that you should not vote for him. As Fraser Anning recently pointed out in an excellent article published at XYZ, it's not the ALP that are responsible for the move towards totalitarianism, despite the fact that they are the ones pushing it. And I quote, while the radical left in Labour may have conceived of the destruction of the wonderful, prosperous and cohesive nation Menzies bequeathed us, the only thing that made it possible and enduring was the collaboration of the very party that he founded. It is in fact the Liberal Party, not Labour, that has enabled ratchet socialism to gradually overtake our nation and has shifted the Overton window to the far left. The only thing that changed in recent years under former Prime Minister Turnbull was that instead of spending a few years in faux opposition to Labour's radical left-wing agenda before later adopting it surreptitiously, Turnbull's enthusiasm for the left-wing agenda brought the Liberal Party lockstep with it in real time. We have indeed seen in real time exactly this phenomenon. Cowardly Coalition MP Immigration Minister David Coleman, in league with Prime Minister Scott Morrison, is the man responsible for this insult to the Australian people. A man entrusted by us to uphold our values and traditions, yet under a little bit of pressure from a small section of an already tiny subset of the Australian population, has sold us out. As a side note, his public email addresses are linked in the description below if you wish to let him know your feelings on this issue. Please keep all contact civil and reasonable. Here is David Icke regarding the cowardly Mr. Coleman. He, Mr. Coleman, has such contempt for the freedom of Australians and is so influenced by this handful of people that he makes a decision that announces, in terms of what he said to me, in black and white, that Australia is not a free country, it's a tyranny. It's a tyranny where the government decides what the people can and cannot choose to hear. And from what I understand, the Prime Minister, um, Scott Morrison, uh, is handling this situation personally from what I hear. This is indeed solid evidence that Australia is now a one-party tyranny. The idea that the government can decide what Australians can and can't hear is an insult to all of us. According to them, we are all children in need of big mummy government to protect our ears from the mean words. Ike is correct in his assessment that Australia is not a free country. Over the last 40 years, the state has slowly eroded our freedoms one at a time.
We allowed the Racial Discrimination Act and other attacks on free speech, the constant increase in rules and regulations around business and our everyday lives, the requirements for ever more licensing, continually dropping speed limits designed for revenue raising, the removal of firearm rights, and the removal of our right to self-defense, and much, much more. So what was the reason Coleman gave for revoking the visa, you might ask? Let's hear it for ourselves. This is the uh, reason that um, he gave for revoking my visa at the last minute. That I was a risk to the health, safety or good order. What the bloody hell does that mean? Good order. Uh, of the Australian community uh, or a segment of the Australian community. And we know what he's talking about there, obviously, because of the, the people that have uh, pressured him in his wavering jelly backbone state to stop me speaking. Remember... David Icke has visited previously and has no history of causing any trouble whatsoever. It is clear that his visa was revoked purely on ideological grounds and nothing else. A few well-connected individuals don't like what he has to say and they want him silenced. The most egregious betrayal in this issue hasn't even come from any politician or left-wing activist, but from supposedly conservative media outsider Rowan Dean. If we had a pure free speech world, uh, which we don't have, particularly in Australia, I would say there's no, there's no issue with people saying whatever they want, but we don't live in a free speech world. Uh, if I use the wrong uh, pronoun addressing a transgender person, you know, I'll be in all sorts of trouble. If I uh, say whatever, uh, you know, there's, there's all sorts of rules now that uh, apply to people. You can't say this or that yeah. without causing massive offence. Uh, I always think that uh, the Holocaust is a special case. I think this guy is a Holocaust denier. I think uh, we ban people people from coming into the country on questions of character. We possibly should ban more, uh, but definitely this guy should, should not be given a platform. Interesting that he says, if we lived in a free speech world, inferring that this makes it somehow acceptable to deny our right to listen. How are we supposed to create a free speech world if nobody fights for one? Nothing is above questioning. Nothing at all. And if something is indisputable beyond question, then making people look foolish in their denial should be a simple task. Shaming dissenters into silence is not a productive strategy and won't change anyone's mind. These days, it's likely to have the opposite effect. On that note, if we are going to now refuse entry because someone denies historically recorded genocides, then the government may need to ban a number of people they don't want to ban. Ha 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 Yes, that's just a little joke. We all know that this is about power and control. It has nothing to do with protecting the health and safety and good order of the Australian people. This is not the first time this so-called conservative government has assaulted the freedoms of the Australian people. Recently, they refused Gavin McGuinness's visa on character grounds after a similar far-left pressure, despite him having no criminal record and simply being an entertainer. Then there's this. You see, I have a letter that Morrison's own Department of Immigration has just sent to Milo Yiannopoulos. This letter warns Milo that the government may deny him a visa to come on another speaking tour here. Uh, it's a notice of intention to consider refusal of your visa application. Tell us why we shouldn't. And this is why it's put him on notice. Listen to this. Despite the locations of your previous appearances being withheld by the organisers, until 24 hours prior to the events, they tried to keep out of trouble, there were significant protests at both the Sydney and Melbourne events. And the protests in Melbourne, the Melbourne event involves violence between those protesting and your supporters. Now get that. Get that. That violence is Milo's fault? Because protesters menaced his opponents his audience, they menaced his audience 
He now can't come again because of the left, or they might be violent again. This is rewarding thuggery, surely. This is telling the left that the more violence they cause, when a Milo comes, or a Lawrence Southern comes, or a Wilders comes, when they come speak, the more violence that the left does outside the events, or even inside, the more chance that even a Liberal government will then stop those Libertarians or Conservatives from coming and speaking at all. This is an accurate assessment of the situation. Only it's not just threats of violence that are now getting people banned, it's simply saying things a few well-connected snowflakes don't like. The so-called Liberal Party, who are also supposed to be Australia's Conservative Party, are now directly acting to remove the liberties of the Australian people. That makes them neither Liberal nor Conservative. In fact, Given their connections with big business and willingness to regulate in their favour against the interests of the people, this makes them fascist by definition. They are literally an authoritarian political party allied with big business. That makes them corporatist fascists. It appears alienating their freedom-loving base is now a core part of the coalition's electoral strategy. If you want individual liberty, you will not get it by voting for them. It is much wiser to look at independent options. But there's more. It wouldn't be right to point out the authoritarian nature of the Australian government without also highlighting their gross hypocrisy. In April of this year, 2019, Melbourne hosts a major conference of Marxists. That's right, the most evil and insidious ideology ever to grace the planet will go ahead and tell everyone how great Marxism is. A conference promoting the anti-capitalist ideas of Karl Marx that's ironically charging $50 to $150 per ticket. It seems they may have missed the entire point. But I digress. They plan to host a number of Marxist speakers from around the world, including David Renton, Justin Chacon, Klaus Kenning, Remy Kanazi, Beruz Buchani, and Lee Wengraf. None of these people I have ever heard of, but this isn't the point. Now that the government has set a precedent for refusing entry to anyone who might hold opinions that threaten the health, safety and good order of the Australian people, it is incumbent on them to deny the visa of each international speaker to this conference. Given the Liberal Party has now shown a willingness to ban speakers who express ideas they dislike, this means visa approvals count as endorsements of said views. Therefore, if they do not revoke the visas of every foreign speaker to the Marxist conference, it means the Liberal National Coalition endorse Marxism. What's good for the goose must be good for the gander. David Icke's assessment of this debacle sums it up beautifully. But let's put this into perspective. I'm a guy um, coming up 67 now. I live in a one-bedroom flat on the Isle of Wight in England, where I've lived since uh, the turn of the millennium, basically. I am a member of no organization. I'm a member of no movement. I um, live my life as an individual, doing individual research and communicating that research as an individual. But we've reached the point, and let's just, before I even say that, just remember what I was at the start, when I started coming out with um, things that challenge the, the norms that people are told to believe in, I was mad. I was uh, a lunatic. I was the, the guy everyone should laugh at. That's what I was then. So oh, he's not dangerous, he's just bloody mad. But as what I put out, again and again through the 90s and right up to present day, in book after book and talk after talk around the world, where there's never been a problem every, anywhere, by the way, they can't, even, they can't even point to other places where there's been a problem, never mind Australia. But as I've um, put this information out, and people have started to realise, hold on a minute, that crazy bloke 
He's turning out to be right. What he said was the plan is happening. And my books from the 1990s are now being read on the television news in terms of changes in society. And thousands, thousands of people are now going, hold on a minute, what else is this bloke saying? Now, <laughs> I'm no longer mad because obviously, you know, that doesn't work anymore. I'm now dangerous. As they say, you only cop flack when you're over the target. If Ike wasn't telling the truth about certain issues such as global warming and others, they'd only call him a madman. The fact that his predictions turned out to be right means he represents a threat to the status quo. As they cannot argue against him, the only option is slander and censorship. Well, that won't work. And there are links in the description to his channel and website. Given what you now know, you may want to listen to what he has to say. The establishment certainly don't want you to do this, but thankfully they are unable to stop you. Some of his ideas may well be crazy, but it's clear that enough of them are right, not to mention engaging enough to worry those who have power over us. So let's give the man himself the final word on this issue. Just, just think, Australia, and the world in general, what that says about your country, what that says about your freedom, that someone is banned from entering your land because they are saying things the government doesn't agree with. That is an Orwellian tyranny. And because the Liberal Party in government, Morrison, Coleman, and the Labour Party, supposed to be the opposition, I mean, I, you know, just throw, just throw that in for a bit of light relief, are basically both supporting my ban for these reasons. So when you vote, you basically have no choice because you're voting for one of two faces or two masks on the same tyranny, who, who have contempt for the basic human freedoms of the Australian population. And you know, you can shake your head and walk away. You can ignore it. Some who also have contempt for freedom will cheer it. Nothing like as many as this uh, rabble think of. Or you as an Australian people can let this be a catalyst to understand that the Orwellian tyranny is not some concept, it's not some time over the rainbow, it's here and it's now and I at, at this point am a a very clear and obvious example that Australians live in a tyranny. The population of Australia is not large by the size of the, the land, obviously. But it needs to understand that um, its country is being controlled by a ridiculously few people and they do not have your interests at heart, whatever party they may claim to represent. What's that line I hear? Great little ditty song. Come on, Aussie, come on. Come on, Aussie, come on. Get off your fricking knees while you still can. Indeed. Thanks for watching. Share the truth around. And I'll see ya when I see ya.